Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. It's been a little while since I've uploaded a video, and that's just because I've been sick, and I am still sick. So if my voice doesn't sound fully up to speed for this video, that's why. But I can film. I'm gonna film. And, uh, wow, N-Series has been quite a show. It has been all over the place. We've gotten some really, really good blasters, like the Infinite, the Agility, the Flex. All three of those are really good options, I think, whether you're a casualist or you want a mod. And then we've got some terrible options. You've got the Dealer, you've got the Pinpoint, just all over the place. Just a messy, messy catalog of blasters. And uh, today, I'm going to be reviewing the one blaster that I was so disinterested in, I wanted nothing to do with it, but I ended up with it in my collection anyways, and that is the Shadow Storm from the N-Series line. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it looks very eerily similar to a blaster that we took a look at before on this channel. I really, really hope it's better. Let's get into it. So the Shadow Storm is a 2024 release out of the N series line, marking it as one of the smaller yet one of the more expensive releases coming out in 2024. This blaster costs $30, which is pretty expensive for an N series blaster, all things considered. And uh, before I talk about design, I'm quickly going to go over the stock that it comes with, the barrel that it comes with, and the sight that it comes with, because it does come with all three of these attachments. I think that the stock looks incredibly bland, there's not much to offer with it. It just looks like a crappy M4 buffer tube looking thing that isn't an actual M4 style buffer tube and is crunched to fit the proportions of the blaster. It is way too short and the best thing that I can say about the stock is it is unbelievably satisfying to put on the blaster. Like, this is therapy. It just clicks right on. There's nothing to say there. As for the little sight that it comes with, it's just a little crappy looking red dot sight thing that has a single reticle in the front and there's no plastic or anything. So it's, it's a sight. It's a thing. If you like the way it looks, then you like the way it looks. I don't think it really matches this blaster's cosmetics. However, the barrel, I actually like a lot. I think that this barrel looks really, really cool. Even if you don't like the foregrip thing, I think that this design of this barrel and the shape of it actually looks pretty nice. And it makes perfect sense fitting onto this blaster. This looks just like an end strike barrel attachment lug. More on that in a second. I think that it's actually a pretty good looking blaster altogether. And when you put all the stuff together, we have a design to talk about. I was very worried about this design when I first saw pictures of this blaster because it looks just like the lock and load. Like this thing looks just like the lock and load. Even the fact that it's an internal magazine top prime pistol size Springer was terrifying because the lock and load was so bad. But I'm happy to report that this blaster isn't a direct copy of the lock and load. It actually does have its own design. And holy crap, this blaster actually looks pretty cool in person. There's lots of intricate little lines going down all over the place on this blaster. I think it looks really cool. The patterning that N-Series is known for brings this blaster to justice. And the most important detail, you see this Nerf logo? It's on both sides. They actually put the Nerf logo on both sides on this one. That just begs the question. Why the hell didn't they do it on any of the other ones? If they could have put the Nerf logo on both sides on this blaster, why didn't they bother to do it on any of the other N-Series blasters? Or even the Nerf Pro blasters? Like, if I come over here and I get the Torrent, the Torrent only has Nerf Pro on one side. Why couldn't they put it on both sides? It doesn't make any sense, but I digress. The design of this blaster looks pretty good. Now let's talk about the attachment point that everybody's been worried about. The barrel attachment point. Look at it. It's beautiful. It looks just like an end strike barrel lug. Right? Right? They made the barrel attachment a single millimeter larger than a regular barrel attachment, which means end strike barrels 
will not fit on the Shadow Storm. Yet somehow, this barrel will fit perfectly on other blasters. So how did they change the attachment point on one side, but they didn't change the attachment point on other sides? And then this barrel works perfectly on the Shadow Storm, but other barrels don't fit on it at all. I don't understand what they did. I don't know what they did. I don't care what they did, but it drives me crazy because they made the stock attachment point still compatible with old stocks. Why couldn't they make the barrel attachment point compatible with old barrels? Why couldn't they do that? Like, it's the, it's the most basic of equations. Just make the barrel work with the barrel attachment. Duh! Hasbro, you have to try to be this stupid. On that note though, let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, a foregrip, a stock, no cheek rest, I guess, but it also features a top prime due to this blaster being a top prime enabled blaster. The main grip of this blaster is unbelievably good. It is one of the best grips ever, just like every other N series blaster. I think it is one of the best and really shines the most on this blaster right up there next to the infinite. But honestly, yeah, I, I love the grip of this blaster. The foregrip, putting your hand up here is unbelievably comfortable. This large triangular section of plastic is just smooth and comfortable to put your hand on. The stock is way too short, though it can come off. And the reason I say there's no cheek rest is because Hasbro put this button on top to disconnect the stock since the attachment nubs are on top, which that makes the stock more stable, but that also means that you can hit it with your chin. And I constantly hit it with my chin. So that can happen, which is really stupid. And as for the top prime, it's not very good. It feels very plasticky and is one of the worst feeling peripherals of this blaster. There's just not much surface area for you to get your hand on, though at least it does have a backstop, so you don't need to grab onto the foregrip too tightly. And as per usual, most ergonomic issues can be removed simply by taking the stock off and putting on a regulator stock. Oh, and it's magnificent on this blaster. Seriously, everything this blaster stands for demands a regulator stock. They even know it. Like, they made the shell line perfectly up with the regulator stock. And the colors almost match perfectly between the lock and load color palette of the stock and the Shadow Storm. Like, why didn't they just give this stock with this blaster? Why didn't they just give this stock? They already proved that they don't care about mag compatibility by including this with the, the freaking lock and load. So why not just put it with the Shadow Storm? Dark compatibility doesn't matter either. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a top prime enabled springer. So you pull the top prime back and that exposes the internal magazine. Then you can drop in up to eight darts and push them down. Once the magazine is full, you push this thing forwards and then you can aim and fire once. And the blaster doesn't have slam fire. You can then just do it again up to eight times. Except for the part where it jams. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's jammed. All right, here, let's try that. Again. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about the smoothness of operation and the triggers. Oh my gosh, this thing sucks to use. This thing absolutely absolutely sucks to use so first of all let's talk about the prime smoothness it has no prime smoothness this is a terrible terribly gritty prime it is so rough and uncomfortable and when you actually put a dart in it it has this super uncomfortable clack going forwards like you get here and then it clicks forwards and the trigger pull is just as bad. It is a very clicky trigger, but in the worst way possible. It's so springy. It sounds like it's gonna rip the blaster apart with each shot. It's a terrible sounding mechanism. It sounds extremely unreliable. I have little to no faith in this blaster whatsoever. I'm surprised the thing has not broken somehow yet because oh my gosh, does it sound like it wants to break. And does it feel like it wants to break? This blaster is undoubtedly the worst feeling N-series blaster that I have gotten up to this point, bar none. Stuff the pinpoint. The pinpoint feels like an OG Strife compared to this thing. This thing feels like an Alpha Strike blaster. 
plastic quality as well. Uh, yeah, the stock feels like crap. The barrel feels fine, whatever. You remember what I said in my N-Series video? But if I know anything about N-Series up to this point, all three of those are not only going to feel different from each other, but are going to be different from all the ones that I already have. Yeah, that comment right there about inconsistency and how I thought that this would feel different than every other N-Series blaster. Guess what? It feels different. And let me explain what this one feels like. All of this teal right here feels like a good Elite Blaster. Everything here feels good. This feels like Alpha Strike, this feels like Alpha Strike, and this feels like Alpha Strike. We've introduced a new plastic quality, the Alpha Strike. Yeah, this just squeezes right in. There is no consistency at all. This feels like garbage, this feels great. The top prime is creaky, it feels awful. I don't know what this thing is made out of. I don't know what Hasbro was on when they came up with the idea for this thing. Let's recreate the lock and load, our worst blaster in history, and let's make it shoot N-Series darts. So not only do you have to deal with the inconveniences of a proprietary barrel attachment point, but also our proprietary darts, and the fact that it's still a lock and load, which means it's probably gonna break! Firing demo. Let's just firing demo this thing. Got to turn it on. Right now, the freaking Apple Vision's fogging up. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh my god, aim. Thank you. For heaven's sake, thank you. Oh my gosh. So what mod potential does this blaster have? I don't know. I mean, it, you could probably open this and then hollow it out to make a, a magwell but then you could also just use a pinpoint and uh, take the stock off of it and give it a stock point. Literally the only thing this blaster has going for it is the stock attachment point because when you put a regulator stock on it, it becomes extremely comfortable and then you have just like a really comfortable internal mag fed Springer thing. Here's what confuses me so much. This blaster costs $30. It was released alongside all the other N-Series blasters, including but not limited to the Infinite, the Pinpoint, the Sprinter, and the Strike Back, which is $5 less, does the exact same thing, and actually has a unique form factor like a shotgun. Not to mention, the Strike Back has the gimmick of the orange part snapping forwards when you pull the trigger. Like the thing slides back and forth, it looks really cool. This blaster has no gimmick. This blaster is more expensive and gives you less bang for your buck. The market for an internal mag-fed Springer pistol is exceedingly low. There are few people who actually want that. Brickasaurus is someone who wanted that and he's pretty excited about this thing. But I hate to break the news to him that this thing absolutely sucks. 
And it feels like this was Hasbro spinning in the general direction of the people who actually wanted something like this because they're like, oh, you didn't like the lock and load? That was our last attempt at this that was absolute dog crap. Here's another one. And this one uses proprietary darts. This blaster is way too expensive. It's a complete waste of money. It's a complete waste of time. And without a doubt, the only redeeming feature the blaster has is the stupid barrel it comes with because it looks cool and it's really comfortable and you can put it on other blasters. It doesn't look good on other blasters, but at least it works. The whole point of this blaster is pointless. This thing's freaking pointless. Even if it actually had a point, the strike back exists and the strike back costs $5 less. And even then the strike back is still overpriced because it's still an internal magazine fed thing in a line that's supposed to actually be like, like a, 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 a practical style. Well, you can't be practical with something like this. It, it doesn't work well. It doesn't shoot well. It jammed up when I was showing it to you guys earlier. How does that happen? How could Hasbro have let this happen? How did they release this thing in full confidence into the wild? Thinking that this thing was going to work. This is the dumbest idea I've ever seen. Somehow it's as bad as the lock and load. No, 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 no. It's not as bad as the lock and load. The lock and load broke. No, it's not as bad. But actually it possibly could be. Because this thing feels as unreliable as the lock and load. I don't trust this thing any further than I can throw it. I don't trust this thing any more than I trusted the lock and load. And this blaster doesn't even have the conveniences that the lock and load had, giving you a bunch of good attachments and giving you the ability to actually mod it to shoot full lengths well or put your own freaking barrels on it. They've taken those things away and they've replaced it with nothing. Do not buy this blaster. For any reason, please don't get a Shadow Storm. If you absolutely need something like this, please go for the Strike Back or go for anything else. As to anything other than this, this thing is so stupid. It's so stupid. I need something to drink. If for some reason you want to get a lock in the, if you for some reason you want to get an end series Shadow Storm. I will link it in the description below. Thank you for watching. I have to go to the bathroom.